I decided during the week that I was finally really eager and motivated to make a compilation video for Rylai. This was actually a video idea that I've been wanting to do for a very long time, but I think in the past I was just like, man, it's gonna take so much effort to film every single part of our routine and structure, but I actually think it's really not that bad. For a video like this, I just really like the idea of maybe informing people or showing people what it takes to have a very well-behaved dog and to show that the training really pays off. A lot of people have commented, whether through social media or even in person, that she is super well-behaved and that they're very impressed with it. In, in the past, like even in New Jersey, when I was living in a condo community, people would sometimes stop and just be like, wow, she's like so good, like walking right by your side and stuff like that. So whenever I get comments like that, I get very happy because it shows that my hard work pays off and that other people recognize that she is well behaved compared to everything else you see. Pretty much today I will be filming everything in regards to what I expect of her and the things that she absolutely knows about. Just to kind of save me being too repetitive within each clip, I'm just going to say now that a big part of the training that I do focuses on state of mind and her being calm generally, I expect her to be calm in nearly everything that we do. Of course, if we're playing, I let her go all out, it's fine, because she has a very like spunky personality, she's very, very aggressive sounding when she plays, but for everything else, I don't want her to rush. She shouldn't be rushing, she shouldn't be like too hyped up, so for anything, whether it's being in a down, getting ready to eat food, or if she's being let out of the crate or going into the crate, going out the door, coming back in through the door, all of that stuff. She's not allowed to be like dashing through, running through. She's not allowed to bolt, none of that. So keep that in mind. Every time you see her doing anything, I expect her to be calm and that is a large part of what I expect from everything. All right, usually first thing in the morning, I don't let her out immediately. I usually either take a shower first or I make some breakfast before I let her out. Every single day, she wears the e-collar anytime I'm home. If I leave the house, I will always take off the e-collar and the prong collar. The prong collar, I only put it on her when I'm taking her for a walk. Otherwise, afterwards, I usually just take it off right away. Even though she is really well trained now, I still like to keep wearing the e-collar because I've mentioned before in the past how training pretty much never ends. So even though most days I could go for several days without ever using the e-collar, I still want to keep having her wear it so she doesn't expect anything different. A lot of the trainers like to call it dressing your dog. So it's just a routine that she's used to that we do every single time right after she comes out of the crate. So cute. Okay, now I'm going to go over what I feed Riley. I have been feeding her raw food, let me think. Pretty much I started it when I moved here. I did try to do it in the past, but I bought a brand called Stella and Chewy's. It was freeze-dried raw food, and those were terrible for her. It made her throw up 
like five times overnight and it also gave her diarrhea so I have been doing raw food and it's really really great for your dogs and it's really not that much of a hassle depending on what option you choose but let me go get the package okay so I so I order off a website called Raw Paws Pet Food you see the label here this one right here is complete signature blend for chicken and this is one pound and then I also get beef usually for now I've mostly just been rotating between chicken and beef mainly because this is pretty expensive and if you try to feed better meat it's gonna get really freaking expensive really fast so Riley is about 31 pounds right now which is a very good weight for her so I feed her one pound total a day. I give her half a pound in the morning and then half a pound in the evening. And the thing is, so usually when I have two of these left over in my already thawed container, I have two of these glass containers. I keep it in this. So I defrost three at a time. So usually when I have two left, I need to start defrosting another one because these take roughly two days to fully thaw. And if I don't, I mean, it's not a big deal. I could sometimes leave it out for a short while for it to faster defrost and whatever you want to call it. I pretty much order 40 pounds at a time and I have them delivered to me and it costs roughly $220. So since I get 40 pounds, I get 40 days of food every time I order. So it does kind of end up being like I pay 220 every month pretty much so it is quite expensive but it is very good it makes her poop smaller usually harder and there's just less overall and it's so much better than dry food poop that stuff smells awful and there's just a lot of it so really great benefits from feeding raw with her the thing is when I just got her as a puppy my breeder recommended me dry food and I asked her for the brand and she told me, so I bought it and I started feeding it to Riley. But the problem was that she was not eating a lot and it was very impossible for me to encourage her to eat. There was really not much I could do. She would not eat the full meal. She would hardly eat and it was so discouraging because you know how dogs really like their food and stuff. So to see her completely like disregard the food was sucky. I think I tried changing it a few times, but she never ate everything that I gave her. And I wasn't the type to free feed, so that really sucked. And ultimately, for a while, I think for the whole time I was in New Jersey ever since I got her, she was pretty much living in New Jersey with me for one year before we moved here to San Diego. So with the raw food though, she loves it of course she just swallows it up completely and that's such a big difference so that's another benefit that she greatly enjoys her food so much more than dry food the downside of course is if you're traveling and you bring your dog with you i went to vancouver recently so i had to kind of stress over how i would fly my food over the food actually didn't turn out to be that bad I had two ice packs that I had from previous shipments from my Freshly days when I was ordering meals delivered to me. So I used two of them and I kind of like bundled them on either side and just put it in a suitcase and it turned out to be fine. It was like still very frozen by the time I got there. So that worked out pretty well. Another solution that could work very well is buying a nice cooler. And that's not something that I did beforehand, but something I will definitely look into buying sometime soon just to help out with making it more reassuring that my food is going to be fine if I ever do travel. So something I want to make sure I don't forget because initially when I planned on making this video, I completely forgot about tools. So the e-collar is the most important tool of all parts of dog training. This thing is incredible. This video is not going to be about e-collar training at all because that is a very extensive topic and that's going to take a shitload of time to talk about and a lot of people are against a tool like this. 
So I'm not even gonna bother talking about it more than just saying that it's an amazing tool and people who dislike it are ignorant. That's all I'm gonna say. If people are curious, this is the ET400 you see on the back here. And it is off the ecollar.com website. This is just a regular buckle collar that she has. I do not recommend bungee collars. It allows a little bit more stretch because when I used it in the past for Riley, I felt like it would move and then if it's not making good contact with the skin, it's not working properly. And also you can see here that the contact points are very short, right? So as a husky, she has a shitload of fur. So I shave her down every week, I'd say. So this is what I use to shave her down with. It's just a wall brand shaver that I bought off Amazon many years ago. And I don't put anything on this. I leave it like this. And the incredible thing is the very first time I used this on Riley, she was very calm. She was good. She didn't struggle. So every time I need to shave her now, it takes less than 10 seconds because I just put it on and shave a little bit of the newly grown hair off and it works very well. Another tool that I started using very late is the prong collar. It looks like this. This is also another tool that people believe is evil, but it's not and they are ignorant. This works so well for heel or just for walks. And I didn't have this tool early on. So by the time I got it, she was already pretty well trained, but when I did use this tool to reposition her heel, it worked very well. I used this without the e-collar to reposition. So at the time, in the early stages of me training, I didn't have her too far back on my right side for heel. Later on, I learned from trainers that it is very beneficial to have your dog a little bit behind you walking. That way your body is in view of them and that kind of forces them to pay attention to you more and to keep track of your pacing and your body language and everything because heel is all about them staying with you, right? They can't move faster, they can't lag behind, they can't go too wide, they really need to stay right next to you. It's a positioning requirement, so if they are slightly behind you, then that's a better position than if she was slightly in front of me or right next to me. So this is awesome and I highly recommend it. Down, good girl, head down, good job. For feeding time, I didn't always do a routine like this, but the main reason I decided to change it was because I didn't really like the idea of her crowding me in the kitchen. So if she's anticipating that I'm about to feed her, she starts hugging me really tight and following me around with a lot of excitement and sometimes she gets in my way and I don't really like tripping over her. I don't like it when she gets so close that it makes it hard for me to walk around because I'm stumbling over her and I'm not the type of person that is going to inconvenience myself if she walks in front of me. If she walks in front of me, I keep walking. I decided that it would be a good idea to have her in a command on the side so I could get her food ready without having her being disruptive I decided to add in the head down just so it could further enforce a calmer state of mind than if her head was up. At times, she tends to do a lot of nervous licking that is part of her personality. She gets nervous very easily. So if she does nervous licking and she is looking directly at me, I tend to not want to release her until she stops doing that behavior because I don't really want to, in a sense, reward her with food while she is still very nervous. So if she continues licking, I wait a little longer until that behavior stops being as consistent. I used to also have the exact same bowl for water, so I had two total, but I think after I moved, I don't know what I did with it or something must have happened where I was stupid and I didn't bring it with me. So I actually like using just one bowl for food and water because since I'm feeding her raw food, it forces me to wash her bowl immediately after she's done eating. Doing this just tends to enforce the behavior of 
me not getting lazy and making sure that everything remains clean. The threshold at the door is definitely extremely important because a lot of dogs have a problem with rushing the door, right? They just run out the door if it's open and that's very dangerous behavior. I expect her to always sit when I'm about to open it and she's not allowed to break her sit until I give her the release word. And I decided to include this clip because I really like our routine for her going out to pee right now. You can see that I'm standing at the door and I'm watching her and I'm waiting for her. But during this entire process, I'm not saying anything. I don't use the e-collar at all. So once she's done peeing, she comes immediately back inside and then she sits for me. I just love how fluid the process is and how I don't have to do that much for her to do exactly as I like. And I just find it really impressive. I included this really small clip of her pooping just to show something I like, but it's definitely not something that is mandatory. It's just personal preference. After she poops, I like for her to just sit for me after so I can pick it up instead of her just wandering around and continuing to sniff. In this clip, it's pretty much a combination of a variety of commands. The first one is heel, which is one that we do every single day on our walks. Heel is a positional requirement and I personally prefer for her to be on my right side and I want her to be slightly behind my leg. Having your dog further back makes it so that your body is in their field of vision and because of that it kind of makes them pay attention to you more instead of just scanning the surroundings and possibly being more reactive. When she's in heel, she has to stay with me, she has to stay with my pace she has to still stay in that position when we're turning and stuff. If I slow down, if I speed up, she can't go wide. She can't lag behind. She can't speed up. And if she does any of that, then she gets a correction. Here you also see I do a down with her. I do sit and I also do come. Those are the three obedience commands that I teach her. And I don't care to teach her any other commands because she's not a circus animal. She doesn't have to perform for me. Every time I say a command, I expect her to do it after one say. If I have to repeat it, then I do correct her for that. There are so many benefits to this training, but you could see how even if we're outdoors and in a completely new area, she is still extremely attentive to me. She always looks at me, she focuses on me entirely, she's not zoning out. It makes it very easy to feel confident that she'll behave the way I like when we're outside and that she'll listen to me. And that was one of the core reasons I decided to go through with all of this training. Aside from the fact that she is a dog that I'm very proud of to take out in public because I know that she'll be very well behaved and that she will listen to me. Alrighty, when it comes to the car, I like to have her in the crate because I find that to be safest. There are a lot of people that use a seatbelt thing that links to their collar, but I don't consider that safe at all because if you get in an accident, it'll probably break their neck. So in the car, I like for her to be in a down with her head down again as well because in the past, I had an issue where I would drive to the park with her in New Jersey and on the way to the park, it was always just the park. She would whine a lot and I hated that behavior. I don't like for her to ever be whining. So I tried so many different things to try to stop that behavior. And the one thing that worked for me was having her head down because I know that I get repetitive and saying this stuff, but having her head down forces a calmer state of mind. And I think it also allowed her to not focus on the surroundings if she has her head up, she gets to look out the window and stuff, and then she starts to anticipate things, get anxious, but if her head is down, then it allows her to forget all of that. And to be honest, when I first tried it, I was extremely skeptical about it even working, but when it completely fixed that behavior, I was so impressed. 
So having your dog's head down is not something that is mandatory by any means, but it works for me personally and it solved an issue I had, so it's just something that I expect from her all the time now. Something simple that I like for her to do when she gets out of the car is to sit after she jumps out. For furniture, I don't like for her to just jump up whenever she wants. She needs my permission first, and if I ask for her to get off the couch or the furniture, then she has to do so as well. Off. Good girl, good job. All right, I'm going to take a little bit of time to talk about my crate choice. So, freaking Milo. Originally, when I first got her as a puppy, I bought those wire crates that were really wide open, and I had it sectioned where it would only be big enough for her as a puppy, but it was actually honestly still too big. You can only section from one direction, and the direction you couldn't was a little bit too long. I realized eventually that a crate like this is perfect because ideally you don't want them to be able to see out too easily. There are holes, but it's just much smaller than the wire crates, and I feel like she fits in this one perfectly. I have two of these. I have one here, and then I have one in my car that you see also in the video. and. She is pretty much sleeping in the crate. In the past, I have let her sleep with me, but I don't like losing quality of sleep by letting her sleep with me, and she's very hairy too, right? She sheds a lot, so if she slept with me, there would be hair all over my bed, and then I might inhale some of it, and I just don't want to deal with that. Plus, she might move around while sleeping, and that wakes me up too, so I don't really want any of that. So she sleeps in there. She has been sleeping in here for many years now, and it works out well for both of us. If I'm not home, she will be in the crate as well, and she is expected to be calm in the crate, always. She's not allowed to whine, she can't fuss or anything, but she's great with it now, and I really don't have any worries with her when it comes to the crate, but the crate is excellent, I love it. It keeps her safe, keeps her happy, keeps her calm. It's like her little den, you know? It's a good thing. It's never a bad thing. Place? Good. Okay, the final command that I do with Riley on a daily basis is the place command. And this is actually one that I did not start doing with her until much later than everything else for the e-collar. It is actually one of the best things you can do with your dog on a daily basis because it is essentially like dog meditation. It is one of the core things I feel that really creates a calm dog because it teaches them to ignore all of their surroundings. And you have to actually be very good at enforcing it for it to entirely work. So at the very beginning of this clip, I walk up to the cot and then I tell her place. She needs to follow through with a command even though I'm not still standing there. So I say it and she's getting on and I walk away. And even if I'm walking away and doing other things, I expect her to get on, go into a down and then put her head down. Once she is in the command, what I expect is I want her to keep her head down. She isn't allowed to get up and circle around and reposition because in the past, when I let her do that, she would do that extremely frequently. She would get up and circle around maybe five times in 20 minutes, and that's not being calm, and that is not just relaxing. So I would correct her for that, and with enough corrections of that, she learns that she's just going to get on and chill and sleep, ideally. Whenever things happen while she's on there, she isn't really allowed to react. So for example, if the cats are running around, 
she's around them long enough by now to know that they just do that shit every single day. So she might react a little bit with her ears and stuff, but I don't really want her to be like looking at them, lifting her head up to look at them because this whole idea of place really teaches her to not be reactive. And dogs are very known to be reactive. Dogs react to the doorbell, they react to other dogs on walks, they bark through fences, they bark at the mailman, they do all of that shit. So she doesn't do any of that. If someone rings my doorbell, she's not allowed to lift her head or do anything. She just stays on there, still in command. If another dog walks by, maybe she'll sense them, but she doesn't do anything either. I'm also pretty confident that this command teaches her to just chill out anytime she's not actually on the cot and in command because when she was about, I'd say four to six months old, she started doing this behavior a lot where she would walk around my condo sniffing the carpet and then occasionally she would lick the carpet and that actually kind of drove me crazy because I don't want her to be licking my carpet, you know? Once I started doing place actually, she does not walk around sniffing for very long at all. If she's not on the cot, she lies down somewhere. Usually if she's not on the couch, then she lies down next to me at my computer chair. But it's just a behavior that I really, really, really like now. Anywhere else around the house that I'm hanging around, if she's not on place, she's just on her own going to lie down and just chill. I feel like for something like place, it is really important to make sure the cot is only for place. I don't let her chew bones on there. I don't let her bring toys on there. When it comes to the cot, she needs to be focused. I don't let her sniff when she's on the cot. She isn't allowed to sniff the ground. She isn't allowed to sniff or lick the cot or any of that. She has to focus on the actual command and just chill out, do nothing, try to shut off her mind. It truly is one of the core commands that makes your dog that much better. So now I kind of want to do an overall recap as to this entire video and say that yes, there is a lot of stuff that I do. Some minor parts of it might not be mandatory, like sitting after pooping or coming out of the car. But for the rest, I would say that a lot of it should be mandatory if you want to have an extremely well-behaved dog. I think something that people don't tend to associate with all of this is that all of the structure helps to reinforce that you want your dog to be calm. And when you have a calm mind, you make better choices, right? If a human is emotional and they make choices, they tend to be hasty or they make bad choices or they say and do bad things in the heat of the moment. So for a dog, excitement is not something that I want out of her regularly. I like to call it controlled excitement because when I play with her, I let her go all out. She can do whatever the hell she wants as long as she's not hurting me too hard because we tend to play rough and she hurts me a little bit, but it's not to the point where I feel like I really need to discipline her about it. If you keep up with all of this every single day, it teaches your dog to always, by default, be calm. And that really helps them to make better choices regularly. And it also gives them clarity as to what you expect out of them. If you think about it, if you let a dog do whatever the hell they want, then yes, they're gonna be garbage. If you let a human child do whatever they want and you don't discipline and give them structure and any of that, then they tend to grow up to be a shitty human being. I feel like people nowadays are afraid to discipline or even set rules because people think it's abuse if you want to discipline a kid now. So dog training is way more than just obedience commands. It's the entire package. Which is why, whenever people ask me about the e-collar, I do not recommend it unless they plan to do everything because it's not going to work properly. You're not going to get the results you want unless you do everything. And you need to do everything rigidly. You can't be lax. You can't be lenient. You can't be weak-minded. You have to be assertive. You have to be consistent. If you have anybody around your dog that is a bad influence, then it's not gonna work because your dog is going to realize that if this person is around, then they can do something specific because that person is not going to be assertive with whatever commands that you taught them. Basically what I'm saying is if you have multiple people around that will be interacting and training your dog, they need to be 100% on board. Otherwise, 
all of this is just not going to work. It is really, truly that important that everything is consistent and that everybody has the same mindset. Okay, well, I hope everyone enjoyed getting a glimpse into everything that I do with Rylai. And I really hope that people understand the general purpose for this video is to educate as well as demonstrate that I'm not just lucky with getting a dog like this. It took a lot of hard work. It took a lot of time. It took a lot of money. It took a lot of emotional turmoil before I reached this point where we are now in a very, very good dynamic. I think oftentimes people just see a well-behaved dog and they don't really connect it with all the effort you need to put in. So I do enjoy getting compliments about her behavior and just her demeanor and all of that, but I do hope people realize that it's a lot of hard work and that it's definitely a lot of effort to achieve. I didn't just get lucky with her personality. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you guys learned something new when it comes to dogs.